beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent, as if they're about to say something but never do. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth.
Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. My Grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. Barbara was a child star for two years, until America grew out of it. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Hmm. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with, if she hadn't died in 1947. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. <sighs> Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan, but I had no idea what was behind that door. <sighs> Just like I had no idea where all this was gonna lead. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It's about dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. I kept eating and eating. My Halloween candy was all gone. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom 
Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. I jumped and I almost got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. off a cliff and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. I wanted fat, juicy seeds. I tore off her flipper and it tasted really good. Everything had changed. Now I was a monster and I smelled people everywhere. I was big.
across the water, I smelt something new. Something I had to have. So I swam towards it. I slithered onto the sand, and the good smell went into an old pipe. Closer and closer. All my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. We got along and it was a good place to hide from my mom. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse, his wife Ingeborg and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Great Grandma had always been the family's biggest fan. Louis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. Edie knit me a new pair of gloves every year, just in time to replace the old ones. Edie gave a big interview about a mole man living under the Finch house. My mom was furious. I hadn't thought of myself as Edith Jr. for a long, long time. One summer, they evacuated the island, but Edie refused to go. For a few weeks, she was a celebrity.
When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. It was a pretty big trace. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin, and that he never talked about him. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom, and he did. At Barbara's funeral, we swore we'd never be afraid again, and he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. Coming! But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. I hadn't said that. Alvin, 
Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up, then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. The day he made up his mind to fly, and he did. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again. Passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Oh, Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up. A has-been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just a boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <coughs> mm, getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. 
Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was cancelled. Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him right on cue. She reached for the music box. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick, but the house was silent. She found Rick's crutch and imagined the worst. infamous hookman killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled and then ate his family ten years ago tonight. The old fridge rattled and grew still. Oh dear! Relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you She threw him out, but she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late Picture show. Hours left. Peter? Barbara! Walter? What's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up. But if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. Island police described the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. Barbara turned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quite smashing. <laughs> Molly's door had 
monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter? Hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. But that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Pretty tail. Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. I guess now I know why mom didn't like me playing with the music box. <laughs> <laughs> 